Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding z-scores using Microsoft Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. I have this exam variable here in column B. In column A, I just have the record number. That goes from 1 to 100. So I have 100 observations in this exam variable. I'm going to convert these scores to a z-score. A z-score is a standard score that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. A z-score indicates the distance of a score from the mean in terms of standard deviation. And among other benefits, the z-score allows us to compare data collected through different instruments, different types of raw data, to one another. So we can take two variables, even though they are measured in different units, and compare the variables to each other by converting both variables to a z-score. So a z-score is a standard score. It's used to standardize variables. So over here in this orange rectangle, I have the equation for a z-score. z equals the observation, that's x, minus the sample mean, that's x-bar, divided by the sample standard deviation. So in order to calculate the z-score, I'm going to first calculate the mean and sample standard deviation. And then after I use this equation to calculate the z-score, I'll also show you another function in Excel that will allow you to calculate it. So let's calculate the mean. So this will be equal sign and average, and then all of the observations here in column B. So cell B2, then control, shift, down arrow. I'll select all the values and enter. So we have a mean of 49.1. I also want the standard deviation. In this case, I want the sample standard deviation. So that'll be equal sign stdev.s. That's the sample standard deviation. stdev.p is the population standard deviation. So we'll go with stdev.s and then the same range. So cell B2, control shift, down arrow, select all the observations in column B, and hit enter. So we have a standard deviation here of 10.1, a mean of 49.1, standard deviation of 10.1. So calculating the z-score here in cell C2 is fairly straightforward, equal sign, and then the observation, in this case, 26.1. I'm going to subtract the mean. I'm going to press F4, function 4, to make that an absolute reference, that reference to J2. And I'm also going to put that expression in parentheses. Divide that quantity by the standard deviation cell J3, and I'm also going to make cell J3 an absolute reference in this function. F4, function 4, we'll do that, and hit enter. So the z-score for this exam score of 26.1 is negative 2.28. So I know that this score is 2.28 standard deviations lower than the mean. To generate the remaining z-scores, I'm just going to autofill all the way down to row 101. And I have the z-scores now for this exam variable. So I've converted this exam variable into the z-scores. I've standardized that variable. Now, creating the z-scores in this method helps to understand what a z-score is. However, there is another function in Excel we can use to calculate a z-score. 
and I'll demonstrate that here in column E, it's equal sign and standardize returns a normalized value from a distribution characterized by a mean and standard deviation. So here we just need the observation, the mean, and the standard deviation, just like we did to calculate it using this equation. So the score, 26.1, the mean, 49.1, and the standard deviation, 10.1. That'll generate the same z-score here. Now I have more digits to the right of the decimal displayed here, but this is the same value. In both cases, negative 2.2754. So if I went back to C2 and added more digits to the right of the decimal, you can see we get the same value. So now I'm going to calculate the probability associated with each score. And I can do this using the z-score. This will be equal sign norm dot s dot dist returns the standard normal distribution and here we just need the z-score and we have another argument here cumulative so the z-score will be negative 2.28 and then comma and under cumulative we want true the cumulative distribution function This gives us a probability of 1% for this score of 26.1. If I autofill this down, I get the remaining probabilities. And you'll notice here, we take a look at the mean. Again, we see it's 49.1. If we move down and find the score closest to that in column B, it would be this 49.12, we can see the probability is 50 percent. And notice for that same record the z-score is zero. So if you have a z-score of zero that is the mean. For a z-score zero is the mean and one is the standard deviation. So a z-score of one would be one standard deviation above the mean. A z-score of negative one would be one standard deviation below the mean. Z-scores are often used to detect outliers and there are various theories in terms of what Z-score would represent an outlier, what would be the cutoff Z-score. It depends on the nature of the research and the data. One popular rule for Z-scores would be a Z-score of less than negative 2.68 would be an outlier or a z-score greater than 2.68. Another characteristic of converting raw scores into a z-score is that we're not changing the shape of the distribution. So for example with this exam variable if I go to insert and move over to charts and insert statistic chart I'll select a histogram here and I'm going to set the number of bins for this histogram. So I'm going to go to format data series and then horizontal axis and then for number of bins you can see right now it's 7. I'm going to change that to 15. So I'm just going to set this chart over here to the left and I'm going to select all of the z-scores in column C and do the same thing. Insert, insert statistic chart and histogram. And I'm going to put this one to the right, but again I'm going to format data series and under series options, horizontal axis and number of bins again to 15. Close that. And we can see, I'll line these up, even though we have different values, here to the right we have the z-scores, and to the left we have the raw scores from the exam variable, 
the shapes of these two distributions are identical. So you can compare two variables that you've converted to z-scores without changing the shapes of the two distributions. I hope you found this video on understanding z-scores in Excel to be helpful. Thanks for watching.